Ciao dear hearts. Happy 2020. I'm so excited to have you back in the studio with me today. And uh, I want to thank you so much for all your comments, uh, for your likes, uh, for following us, for sharing. Um, I just, I love hearing from you and thank you for your subscriptions. We appreciate it so much. Um, and for the last post, I asked you uh, what you wanted to see in 2020. So I wrote down everything that you wanted. I'm going to add that to my list of the things I wanted to share with you this year. And your number one thing was to see an organized mixed media studio. So I'm going to show you the way I organized today. And Don's going to pan the studio so you can see the size of the studio. So my studio is about 13 feet by 12 feet and I've always had a home studio and it started when I was a teenager when my father brought an old door home and made me a drafting table. That kind of set the stage for our home studio. So this shelving unit is my inspiration station and I change it out seasonally um, and um, I always create these little vignettes and my little shrines and uh, have books that inspire me and uh, I just I couldn't live without that. The only thing missing is a chair. I would love to have a chair but my studio is a little bit small for a chair. So the first thing I want to talk to you about is supplies and um, in this little IKEA um, flat file I have papers and we're going to talk about paper later but right now I wanted to share with you the different uh, surfaces. Now this is just a folding table but what's great about it is it will uh, it will, it, it's adjustable so the height so I can stand at it and I can sit so I really like that. I can pull it out into the room uh, and so there's a lot of flexibility and flexibility is something that you have to have in a studio. Uh, for storage for pens, uh, pencils and for art sticks, these, this is my, uh, my Prismacolor um, uh, carousel. I think it was originally intended for uh, pens, but um, I, I use colored pencils all the time. And the way I do it is that when I run out of something or uh, I put all my extras here and so then I know when I've run out of a color, I simply write it down here, put it on a sticky note and stick it here and that way I'm really organized and I can, I know exactly what I'm missing and what I have to go uh, to go get. Um, usually at Amazon, uh, I'll buy something. Um, also this little, um, this antique little wire dealio in and out basket, I absolutely love this. This is where I keep uh, my pertinent uh, information, things that are going on. Like this is right now, um, I'm gathering all my things for the class in uh, at Way Art Yonder in uh, August. And so I'm putting everything in this file and setting some books aside for class, some French pieces, and this is where they all come to live. So that way I stay organized. Uh, Okay, this is the desk that you see me sitting at all the time. I do almost, well, not all my work here, but I do a lot of work here. Certainly my bookmaking usually happens here. Um, I love this desk. And on it I have my uh, little journals. And I don't put journals away, I keep them out. And the reason I do is so I will use them. And um, my pencils and my pens are here. These are just black pencils, um, pens, um, art graph, blenders, um, things like that. And my little uh, sharpener is right here too. And so when I finish up with a pencil or a pen, I just simply put it back in here. I've gotten into the habit of doing that. And, um, and so I can always find them because they live on this little basket. Here's a little tip. Mixed media art is so messy and you pile the whole desk up with all kinds of stuff. On every desk I always keep a little basket and it has all my tools in it. It's got pliers, it's got gloves, it's got rulers, it's got pencil, it has a bone folder, glue sticks. So as I'm working I simply put everything into the basket and that way they don't get lost. In this desk I have all of my all of my bookmaking um, supplies and I have them all in little plastic uh, tubs and tins and these are all recycled 
um, I try to keep an environmental studio. So these little boxes um, are what we get our tomatoes in. And I just simply recycled it, put the tags in there. And this came from an egg carton. Uh, this is the, the top to an egg carton and it makes a nice little tray and you know recycling keeping everything as green as I possibly can in the studio. I think nuts or something came in here and these are little ribbons for bookmaking. Um, and so um, it just keeps everything completely organized. I've got my pens, my Prismacolors, my assorted pens, and then I have extra cases for traveling. And I have my ruler collection, which I have several rescued rulers because that's what I do. I rescue things. Um, in here, I use these all the time. This, these are my foam texture pieces. And these are my found stencils. And I love the baggie method. It works really well for me. And in here I have all my found stencils. And then behind here I have carving tools, speedball, and my linos, and all my cutters are in this box back here, which you probably might not be able to see. Okay, in here I have my rags. Being an environmental studio, I don't use any paper towels, I don't use tissues, I don't use baby wipes, I don't use any of that stuff. I rewash everything and use real towels. And this last one, I'm going to get on the floor to show you this. These are things I use all the time. Wax paper. I use this for mono printing. The freezer paper I cover my desk with. And then the seal, press and seal, is such a great little tip. So I will often mix up paint in a, an egg carton. And then this press and seal I will cover the top of it so that I can just leave that evening and come back to it the next day and it's sealed, it's nice and neat, and my paints are still mixed in the small quantities that I need for um, portraiture. I've got my gloves in here. Um, these are some recycled baggies and then large storage gallon baggies are back there. Since my studio is small, I decided to create a painting shelf and I absolutely love it. I'm so glad that I did this instead of using large easels. I can work as large as three feet by four feet, uh, even bigger than that. It can take up this whole wall and work lots of small canvas. So you can probably see the nails on the wall. I just gesso something and then stick it up here and then start painting. And I have all my paint brushes up here. Uh, these are rescue paint brushes from estate sales and garage sales. These are newer brushes. Um, some of these are, have just been given to me. And then I keep all my paints and everything here. So I have Goldens um, in the bottles. I have Goldens in the tube, Liquitex. Um, and then these are assorted different paints that I get at estate sales or garage sales or whatever. Small paints are in here. And then um, I'm going to list these on our Amazon. I'm going to have Don put them on the link. This is actually a, uh, a makeup uh, organizer and it works so well for all of my tins and I absolutely L-O-V-E love it. I've got my um, glossing liquids, retarders, and some molding paste and my all my gessos are here. And then down here I have fabric paints. I really love um, the jar method. When I'm done with it, I can just throw them in the appropriate jars. So fabric paints and Lumieres are in here. And then this little thing, we'll put this on the list too. I love this. I love the acrylic uh, because it takes up less visual space and it gives you, you can see right away what's in here. So my H2O's, Perfect Pearls, things like that. My uh, stumps are in here. So this little table, um, again, flexibility in the studio, is an antique table that I bought years ago and it's a folding table and I just love it. It was in a terrible shape when I got it and so I can't hurt it. And it is my art journaling table. It stays up all the time. It used to be over by the window. We moved it into the center so I can pull it back and forth and create space that I need. I'm working on my journal as we speak. I left the mess on the desk so you can see the difference and that I cleaned everything else off but I left this just the way it is because I'm still working on it. And in fact, 
Our next video will be a flip through of my 2019 pages. We're going to go through all of that and talk about all of the techniques and my ingredients and how it's been changing for me art journaling. Okay, this table is really skinny, thin. Um, it does it. It provides a lot of uh, space in the studio, and what I use it mostly for is for sewing small projects, and. Um, I also use it for when I have a, a series coming out and I'm working on it, I just take all the folders and um, any, any kind of uh, bags or books, um, you know, how you peruse all of, the, all of the information and the images. And so I just kind of lay it out all here so that I can work on my um, flat file or another desk and then all of the clutter stays here. So this is really a great space. I really don't work here too much. I do stitching though. And this is my little sewing um, cabinet here. Okay, so in here I keep all my scissors and this is, these are my measuring tape, my little collection of the ones I've rescued. I have pins and needles in here. This one doesn't want to come out, so pins, needles, in little boxes, things that I've rescued. And here, oops, that one does want to come out. <laughs> and I've got threads, and these are laces and velvets and twine. And I have the rest of my, uh, my threads in here, and you can notice my color palette. <laughs> in this drawer, I have um, mostly uh, supplies, um, glue sticks, my templates, I've got tape. And in this drawer I have um, lots of bits, my chalk for my chalkboard, um, pastels, different sets in here. I've got extra pencils, here's the uh, egg carton top again um, with my pencils and my black wing erasers, my pen nibs, inks for my pen nibs, and um, punches. I'm really lucky to have this storage um, closet. And so I have all of my uh, boards in here and uh, my size. And um, in this little basket, I have my iron and other small tools. I've got my blow dryer and a heat gun. All those things are hidden in here. And I've got some, uh, some binders with papers in them that I'm gonna show you later. But what I wanted to share with you in here um, are these little drawers and they're really wonderful and I'm gonna open them up so you can see what's in them I have supplies in them this one's empty yay and I've got bits these are my tapes in here flowers bits stamps empty because I did clean these out you knew you were coming. And these are all buttons. All my little buttons are in here. So. Okay, right next to it I have a little printer's tray with um, lots of little bits that I that I love. In here I have some old books. These are all my assemblage bits. And they're organized, sort of. They're, they're organized so that I can find them. I don't know that anyone else could find them, but anyway, lots of stuff in here. So love that. Okay, right here I have some, these are old sheets that I use for painting cloths for my uh, painting shelf over there. And then in here I have all of my fabrics and I have a bunch of laces and I have them organized there in baggies. So I know exactly like this is all tatting. Um, these are um, pieces with lace edging um, so that I have them all ready to use. In here I have um, my uh, filing cabinet and I'm going to show that to you later. Um, up here I've got my marking tools, I've got tapes and bags up there. And in here, these are empty so I'm just going to move this. In here I have all my ribbons and I've got two totes full of ribbons and the way I do this is the baggy method. So I have fabric samples, dyed fabric, cheesecloth and shears, laces, um, hankies and embroidery 
embroidery threads. And then on, on here, I have actually written <clears throat> in the order that they appear in the box so that I know that embroidery threads are the very last one. And that way it just makes it so much easier for me to just finish it, Ziploc it, poke it back in here. And what I love about the Ziploc method is that you can squish it down so you can take all the air out of it. Okay, in this giant box I have cardboard and I have lots of different kinds of cardboard and I have them arranged by size and kind. So there's um, just plain and corrugated, everything that I want to use is right there. These are supplies. Actually, this one is all my glues and these are supplies here and supplies up here. And um, I went through them all this year and of course a lot of my glue was already dried up because you know supplies dry up at, in, in, after a year. So I have small book covers in here. I have stamps. I have my pasta machine and I have brayers stored in here. And then down here I have an extra paper cutter along the wall. This, these are all my tools. <clears throat> they all live in here. And then in the one below it are more assemblage bits that are wrapped in paper. When paper comes to my studio in a roll, I just put it in this big wire basket. Um, that way I don't have to put it into the flat file or anything. I just leave it in here and it works out really well. We're talking about paper and large pieces of paper. And so we're gonna go right to the flat file now. Okay, this beast of a flat file we rescued from an estate sale. She was pretty beat up and we cleaned her off and I absolutely love her. And so she, she holds my big sheets of paper. These are my large sheets of Fabriano in here. And I have sketch pads in here. This is just old sketch paper. It's just stuff to scribble on and play with. In here I have finished work. These are all pieces, it goes back even farther, let me move the table. Um, all kinds of finished work in here that a lot of it I did for Stampington and some of it is newer work. I have all my large antique pieces in here. I just um, love this and it stores everything really, really well and um, it's nice having so much space. All my paper pads live in here. <clears throat> works out really well so I can buy three or four pads at a time and poke them in there. Wrapping papers that uh, are flat or I can flatten if they're super big um, instead of putting them in there I can put them here. I have tissue paper in here and office um, canvas cloths for printing. These are my antique books and I love this flat or this uh, flat file for books and for antique pieces because they're out of the light and so they just kind of live here. A lot of these have uh, wonderful old um, illustrations and uh, it being closed up like this really helps keep them. And plastics live here. All different kinds of plastics so I can find them easily and this one is empty. So the thing that makes people crazy in a mixed media studio is usually paper because it gets, gets out of hand. So we looked at the big pieces and how I handle that. And then once you start tearing it apart and you start using it for projects or if it comes in and it's about um, an eight and a half by 11 or a little bit smaller, then you need a spot to put things. So I've got some tissue paper in here. <clears throat> um, and I've, se I've separated it by plane and uh, print and this is all wrapping paper and these are handmade papers and more handmade papers down here so we're gradually getting smaller and smaller and smaller okay so my filing cabinet has mostly copies. Um, it has images, female inspiration, uh, natural dye um, projects, um, also uh, all kinds of monotypes and things like that, postcards. So I use this little filing cabinet for that. It's worked out really well um, right now. I'll probably need something bigger you know, later on, but right now it's, it's perfectly fine. I'm also a fan of binders and I use binders for lots of different um, images and bits. And in this one, I have all of my uh, Dresden. 
So I've got all Dresden pieces in here. Everything that's Dresden lives here. It's real easy for me to find and uh, I can't remember where I bought this thing, but you could just use a plain binder for it too. This old binder has all my old photographs in it and uh, this works really well. And this binder is called my scraplet binder and it has tiny, tiny little bits. I think this was probably like a business card uh, folder binder at one time, but um, it, it works really well with the tiny, tiny scraplets. I just love it. It's really fun. And then this one has a little bit bigger images and uh, I've tried to group, you know, females together and uh, different bits. So there's lots of fun things in here and uh, it's starting to make me want to make things now that I'm looking at everything again. And so it works quite well, binder method. And of course we have these archival sleeves um, on our, on our uh, links too, so that you can get them on Amazon. Okay, now we've ripped things apart on the table. They've gotten really small, but we also have scraps and scraplets. And this is how I store them. So I have several of these old picnic baskets and it works really well with the baggie method. And I just, you know, these are just old um, labels that I just put on each one so that I know exactly what's in here and plain scraps so that wrapping paper scraps and and when I start a project I always go to my scraps first and in this one here I have all of my antique bits so antique pieces antique this is actually a book that's completely falling apart um, and uh, other books that are falling apart aren't live in here so this works out really well and as it gets tinier and tinier, littler and littler bits go in here. I have ribbons, tissue, antique small bits, uh, the inserts from the photo albums, fabric scraps, lace scraplets, uh, and even the book spines live in here, the crunchy stuff. So that's how it works in my studio. And I know this is running rather long, but the last thing I wanted to talk to you about is lighting. And it's really important in a mixed media studio because it's different than other arts. So you need overhead lighting, which I have. Um, you need uh, just floor lamps and you need task lighting that you can move and change so that I can lower this and I can stitch here and sit um, and can see really well. You need the flexibility in a studio. So this lamp, can move up onto this table. I've got up lighting here and my window is a north facing window which offers lots and lots of wonderful light and I have a sliding door so that I have great ventilation in the studio. Well, we're almost at chow for now and I want to thank you for hanging out with me today and for looking in all my drawers. I cleaned everything up for you and uh, this is how I keep it organized and I do it every January and I hope that you enjoyed it. Um, next time I'm going to flip through my journal. I am almost done with it. I'm really excited. I'm going to be putting the end pages to it and uh, we'll have a flip through. We'll talk about it and I can't wait to see you then. So ciao, ciao. Oh.